Joining us back on Wall Street Silver is Andrew McGuire. Andrew is an independent metals trader and analyst. How's it going today, Andrew? Really doing great, guys. Um, yeah, we've uh, we've just got our so over our, our our next last bout of COVID, and we're doing really well. So <laughs> hey, here well, we are, remember, ready to rock and roll. So you're 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 now you're now naturally vaccinated, right? So great job, Andrew. <laughs> Yeah, I sure am. I am naturally vaccinated. <laughs> okay, so we wanted to get you on today to talk about Basel 3. Uh, you know, I talked with you by email yeah. and you had a sort of a different opinion about this British exemption. So let me, let me share real quick what the news was on Basel 3 earlier this month. And you can see here that the media put out that you know, right when the Basel III regulations were supposed to go into effect, LBMA carved out and it convinced the British authorities to carve out an exemption for the, the primary trading firms in London. Mm -hmm. And everyone is assuming that Basel III was essentially neutered at that point. Tell me what's really going on, Mr. Andrew. Yeah, well, you know what? This is, it's good because... Um... <laughs> I guess really they're being very careful in, and you know, this is the first bit of news. If you remember when we talked about Basel III, 12 months ago, we'd been, we talked, we had a meeting at Wall Street, so we talked to two months ago, I think we had a, a discussion about it. And at that point, not a single media organization was talking about this tectonic event, which was coming. And, and now all of a sudden, yeah, you just pointed at a Reuters article, there was a Bloomberg one. Oh, but only those were only covering why it may not happen, which is interesting. But, you know, really just stepping back really quick, we're not going to go through, everyone knows what Basel III is about. I mean, look, when it was agreed, originally, these NSFR, uh, the, these net stable funding ratios were agreed back in 2013. The reason I raised that is this is when it triggered the commencement of central bank gold market repatriations. I mean, if you remember the, the, the farce in April 2013, when uh, what an embarrassment that was for the Fed when uh, Germany came to, to ask for their 300 tons back. Oh, it was going to take seven years. I mean, come on. It illustrated the degree of leverage employed and, and why it's taken so many years before this could kick in for Europe. Look, as far as this relates to gold, and obviously this is the issue, gold, silver, but of course it, it deals with other commodities, but really gold. For the rest of the globe, paper gold stock is now officially classified as simply more risky than physical gold stock, with, with paper gold no longer counted as an asset equal to physical gold. So really, look, as far as, I mean, so really this puts the UK at odds with Europe and the globe who have adopted these uh, these standards. Now, so as far as the UK is concerned, as you can see, there's a scramble. Uh, but it really, it's a mixture of issues. I see it um, that are at play here. Brexit is actually one of these things. And people haven't really concentrated on that because the UK, the independence of the city of London is actually being fought on many, many fronts in all the financial areas. But really, as far as goals concerned, this is a fight the LBMA will have to concede or allow gold to be physically priced. Either way, we win because the gold price will rise. Now, if it is not physically priced, it's going to be arbitraged. Look, mm -hmm. there's a, the rest of the globe has, ad ad has adopted these standards. So what this is to me, it's a sanctioned global move to revalue gold. And Europe is seeking to back its currency with gold reserves. But stepping out of the weeds for a minute, this is actually a fight for US dollar hegemony, and it will continue. So hmm. correct me if I'm wrong. So the argument is that the British authorities by themselves do not have the ability to overrule what the rest of the world is doing. The rest of the world will drag London into this simply because these banks don't just operate in London only. They also operate in all these other countries Therefore, they're going to be forced to comply, even if London, even if the British authorities provide them with an exemption. Is that the gist of the argument? Well, it, it, it appears to be, but there's two issues that here. The, the clearing members, we're talking about the LPMCL clearing members. Look, there's an incestuous relationship that has always existed between this clearing, the clearing house and 
the same members who actually have a privilege to have gold accounts at the Bank of England. Now, they cannot overturn the fact that the rest of the globe has adopted these standards. Now, if they price, this is the key issue, if they price spot gold in London in the over-the-counter market too low, because the COMEX, amongst all the other global uh, areas, are COMEX compliant, what that's going to do is create a delivery opportunity, an arbitrage opportunity, because the COMEX guys, unbelievably, is physically back now. It has to be. So mm. you put it into backwardation in the over-the-counter markets, that is the key here, whether they like it or not. You put it into backwardation, uh, the futures into backwardation to spot, it's just simply going to become deliverable in London. So mm. I think, yeah, you've got two things. The clearing banks are seeking uh, are really seeking this exemption, but what they're going to be given is the fact, yes, you can continue to clear as long as you back all those transactions with physical gold one to one. And I think that's the part that most people are missing. It is not a bearish thing at all. So, and if they don't, we know what's going to happen. Well, I, I think I think we're also likely to see a lot of business shifting out of the UK, out of London, uh, towards the Far East. Uh, I think there's some new gold clearing houses, clear, uh, uh, trading firms uh, setting up shop in Singapore or uh, in China. Where, where, where are the new places where gold is likely to be centered around the globe, if not in London and not at the COMEX in, in the United States? I think London cannot afford to let that happen. Yes, we're seeing, well, basically the rest of the globe is physical. It, it is, has to be physically back. So this is the interesting part about it. So for example, I think I mentioned to you last time, um, you know, all of the Swiss, European, Asian uh, uh, market makers are basically really what they've done is really reduce their, their, their physical trading side to a very straightforward uh, supply demand basis. So basically what's gonna happen now is that, for example, UBS, it's not, I mean, no one's written about this, but UBS have now reduced their, their physical tra trading desk to just two employees. For, in, this in is London? for UBS, the market maker for physical gold and silver have now only two employees. So yes, what's gonna happen is if the UK, uh, again, it, it all gets back to the fact that if they do not uh, adopt these, sta these, these standards, the arbitrage opportunities are gonna shoot them in a foot. They are forced to, mm -hmm. so, and they do not want to allow physical trading to move out of London. So yeah. this is basically, this is, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, I, I remember a few months ago, there was a big stink over Dubai's uh, gold, physical gold market and you know what they were doing uh, in terms of London was basically trying to apply the screws to Dubai in order to main, con maintain control, uh, sort of for you know in preparation for all uh, everything that we're seeing happen right now. But um, on to other issues. Um, there's something going on with Kinesis with the the, the yield this month. Uh, could you update us on what's going on there? Yeah, actually, this is this is I'm very proud of this as well to be a member of an amazing team. Uh, and really, it is the team. This is a huge team effort. Um, that this is a historic moment. Um, not only it's not only for Kinesis, but for the whole precious metals industry, because Kinesis is now offering a yield on gold and silver for the first time, and we're paying it. It's all it's never never been done before. So, wow. I, I mean, just to think what this means. The one major drawback of precious metals investment has been solved. And I think people don't, not everyone's aware of this yet. And, and it, it, to getting into the details, we're not talking small fish. We are talking on July the 7th, just passed, we just, Kinesis just paid out $862,000 worth of gold and silver to its users who've been minting, which basically that just means creating new Kinesis currencies and that was for the minter's yield. And, and look, that's just the beginning. And this is the exciting part. Minting gold and silver really, as we know, just means creating new uh, uh, Kinesis currencies. But the Wall Street silver community, who we app 
absolutely support will love this especially because the next yield to come online is the holders yield and that's over two and a half million dollars and i'm looking now two and a half million dollars of, of are currently is, is currently in the system ready to be paid out just wow. for stacking gold and silver with kinesis no so this that is, that history in the making Sorry to interrupt, but that, that comes from all the people. The big question with Kinesis is how do they pay a yield? And that comes from all the transaction fees of uh, people using their debit cards or doing payments or receiving money. That little one point something percent of those transaction fees, the velocity of the transactions is what part of that money goes into the pool and then gets paid out to there's a holder's yield, there's a minter's yield if you actually, you know, mint silver and gold into the system, into the storage vaults. And there's one other one. Um, there's a KVT, something like that, but uh, I don't understand all of them. Maybe you can explain. Yeah, look, in, in total, and, and obviously one can get onto the website and look at all the details, but in total, uh, we've, we, including KVTs you just uh, uh, have just alluded to, there's $9.2 million worth of silver and gold already ready to be distributed back to Kinesis users uh, for the five Kinesis yields that you really, to get on the website, have a look at how simple they are. That is just, as you say, all it is, is a sharing of the, of the, of the pool and sharing it back to the users rather than a credit card company keeping all of the fees. We mm. simply pay. And then of course you've got then of course, the as you use these currencies, they continue to build yields. And in fact, there'll be a point when you, you pick up your mobile phone and you'll be able to live, you'll be able to track each and everything you've ever minted, spent and held. As you'll see it growing, as it travels through the system, you'll see your balance actually move on your phone. So this is, this is I mean, talk about, this is almost, this is better than any, anything in the gaming industry. Mm. This is real money being used for everyday things. And because you get this yield for life, you can track it on your phone. And it's, a, yeah. it's going to be very compelling. Andrew, I, I don't know if this is something you want to talk about, but I'm, I'm curious, uh, your footprint globally, uh, you know, what, what regions are you are seeing acceptance and, you know, what, what you anticipate in terms of growth? Yeah, you mean it's You mean in relationship to this move to physical? Yes. Yeah, well, no. In relationship to your business, at Kinesis. Uh, you know, are, are you seeing particular regions mm -hmm. of the world where you're having great success with acceptance? Are there areas that you're anticipating that that you'll grow into? That absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and of course, of course, you know, it's it's widely accepted in in the Western world, but also when we think about it places like Indonesia or where we have the unbanked, the underbanked. There are millions and millions of, hundreds of millions of people around the globe, Africa, Indonesia, uh, South America, all of these places um, where the banking system doesn't touch people. And these people, and people are forced to use onerous systems like MoneyGram and, and, and Western Union and, and who take so much of a spread. Now this, so really, yeah, we're opening up gold and silver as money to the people that really understand it, the people that have always understood it. Uh, and uh, so really, yes, I think um, that those are the areas um, I think that are very exciting. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a, a side to the, to the Kinesis currency, uh, which, is, which is definitely um, gonna be very, very beneficial for global users. What, are you pissed off that gold's not at an all time high? Why isn't silver at 50 right now with everything going on in the world? Right. That's an easy answer, actually, um, because with this unwind of unallocated, as we explained once or twice uh, to, to the community, is that what you need involves is it's a foreign exchange transaction. What you do is you have to sell the gold transaction to buy back the dollar leg. So what does that do? Obviously that's great, but what, what you're doing as you do this is you're actually removing overhead supply. We're going through that process. In fact, silver is in fact exactly in the same situation. It's joined at the hips, same actors, it's not Basel III compliant, but you cannot have a dislocation. So I think, and, and in fact, what was really interesting today, I've just got something for today 
this afternoon from uh, Argo Horaeus. And what this kind of says to us is, look, hang on a minute, that we are now seeing this physical, the physical dog wagging the, the paper market tail. And here's pure evidence of it. It says here, look, uh, as we've all experienced, the bullion market conditions have changed in the, in, and, and they're saying the sourcing production of fine materials, four nines, gold and silver in particular, is getting more and more complex and expensive due to current market conditions, namely overall increase of costs, logistics, loco swaps, volatility, liquidity constraints, and so on. Therefore, we need to adjust our quotations accordingly. Then they talk about, we've also really got to be industry compliant, regulatory and compliant. This is the first example of what we're talking about. This unwind of unallocated is actually causing the, and of course, it's too expensive to roll these positions onto your balance sheet and it's too risky. So this is the first step in having a physically compliant market. You watch this space by the end of the year, you're gonna watch and probably even two months before it is before Basel III becomes compliant in the UK. You can bet your life these guys are compliant ahead of time. On that note, Mr. Andrew McGuire, thank you very much. And we look forward to talking to you again. My pleasure and uh, we love you guys and uh, really support you, follow you. And uh, first place I come every day is to see what you guys have been saying. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, Andrew.